Good morning, River Heights. It's great to be with you on this Tuesday morning. Today we are going to be reading from one of the most famous chapters in the Bible, and it is Psalm 23. If you grew up going to church, you may have memorized the entire chapter of this uh, book in the Bible. And I did that when I was in Sunday school as a younger child. And I probably memorized it in the King James Version, but today I'm going to be reading from the NIV. And even if you're new to this whole church thing and you happen to have found us on Facebook Live today, you might be very well familiar with the verses that we're going to read today. Psalm 23 is one of my favorite psalms. And even though sometimes we think of it as something you read at a funeral or um, that sort of thing, it's actually a psalm of comfort for our lives. It's a psalm, a psalm of assurance of God's care for us. And I feel like it's such an appropriate psalm for this season that we're living through. And so I want to just share it with you today and give you a few thoughts about it. And before I read it, I do want to just say that it was such a wonderful thing to see so many of your faces on Sunday for Easter. I was so um, overcome by emotion and, um, and just love for each one of you as you came through and those who couldn't come through. It was just a reminder that it's going to be such a wonderful, wonderful day when we can be all together loving and caring for each other in person. So I hope if you were able to come that you were blessed, that uh, you were able to experience the risen Jesus um, on Easter morning. And I hope in your homes you were able to worship and uh, be together in spirit as we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus. So as we read Psalm 23 today, I'm going to be reading it from the NIV. And my hope is that you will allow these six verses to transform and inspire you today. So let's read Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, Psalm 23 begins with a small but important note. It says that this is a psalm of David. Now, David was one of the most beloved kings of Israel, and he was also a completely human and flawed person. He was just like we are. He made so many mistakes. He did so many things that would have caused him to be separated from God or feel like he could never return to God. But in David, we see an example of someone who recognizes and acknowledges what they've done and turns back to God because God is his only hope. So David, completely human, was tempted to fret over his life on many occasions, and not the least of which was the time when Saul, who was the former king of Israel, was on the hunt to take his life. And this psalm, Psalm 23, this really familiar passage, according to some scholars, it was formed exactly in the background of this situation where Saul was hunting David down to kill him. Now, the psalm has two basic sections. 
each one that help us see God in heaven as the good shepherd. So the first four verses focus on God as faithful and good to his people. And it calls us to trust God no matter what. Now we're in one of those seasons where trusting God has taken some effort for some, uh, myself included some days, that I've had to remind myself of the goodness and faithfulness of God and that God is trustworthy. And so that's what this psalm calls us to do, is trust in God through all circumstances. And then the second section, just the last two verses, focus our attention on God as a gracious host, preparing a splendid meal for us, and results in our rejoicing over his grace toward us. So interestingly, the theme of God as a shepherd was really common in ancient Israel, but Psalm 23 takes it a step further, and it makes a point to show God as a good shepherd who, like the ancient shepherds, knew his flock really well. He, he knows each one of his sheep, that's you and me, by name. And as a result, God, as the good shepherd, does not mean he, he's just our protector, but he's also our caretaker. God offers us life to the fullest, and he provides us with everything we need and more, as this psalm says. Now, sometimes when we think about that and we say, I have everything I need, we can pause and think, well, I don't have this car that I want, and I don't have certain material possessions that I want, and I don't feel like I have everything I need. But God is inviting us to see that in our soul, inside our life, our spiritual self, he has given us everything we need in his son, Jesus. He provides us with everything we need and more. So without our shepherd, the reality is that we're helpless, which is exactly why Jesus calls himself the good shepherd in John chapter 10. In his own words, Jesus says in John 10, 14 to 15, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me just as my father knows me. And I know my father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus knows you. He knows your name. He knows what you're feeling today. He knows what you're going through. He knows the joys you have today and he knows the sorrows you have today. And he says in John 10 that he knows his own sheep and he lays down his life for us. That's what we just finished celebrating on Sunday, that Jesus laid down his very life for us and he was resurrected to give us new life because he loves us and he cares for us. Ultimately, it's Jesus who is the loving protector and caretaker of this flock. He's the fulfillment of what David wrote about in Psalm 23. And as we come off this amazing Easter celebration from this past weekend, I pray that you will allow this short but powerful psalm to draw you closer to Jesus, your protector, your caretaker, and your savior. I'm going to read the psalm one more time and then close us in prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. 
and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Would you pray with me? Lord, I pray for each one of the people listening this morning and for myself that you will make this psalm a reality for us today. That we would be able to trust you, that we would be able to see you and experience you as the good shepherd who knows our name, who gives us everything we need for this day. Lord, we receive your goodness today. We receive your love that will follow us for all the days of our life. Lord, we pray that you will bring us back together into the house of the Lord here on earth so that we can be together soon. But we are so grateful today that we will dwell in your house forever, for eternity. Lord, comfort us today. Prepare for us a table filled with goodness and mercy. Guide us along your right paths today. And I pray that you would refresh our souls as we walk through this hard time of life, that our souls would be refreshed by you. We love you and we bless you today. In the name of Christ. Amen. Go in peace today, friends. Be filled with the goodness of God. Amen.